You know, you want to go get the rescue dog and bring them into your home. It's a wonderful experience, but we want to make that process also just as rewarding for the pet and, of course, for the owner that has decided to expand their family. So here is uh, Joel Silverman, you know, my celebrity uh, uh, animal trainer, and uh, from uh, Best Friends Animal Society, Michelle Sathy. Yeah. And welcome. And welcome. We have... we have King here that you brought. Yes. So Joel can retrain him, and he's up for adoption, I understand. He is. He's a 10 year old pug mix, but he acts like he's two years old. So he's very, very, <laughs> very to friendly. Be here. He's been here all morning. Yes, he's looking oh. for a home. He's at the Best Friends Center in Mission Hills. So, Joel, all right, it's important when we acclimate. We want to bring them, and we need to get them acclimated to our, our house. And a rescue dog um, is yeah. different, right? Well, basically, um, a lot of variables involved. you look at, you got to look at where the dog is going to come from. It's going to come from, a lot of times, two different places. It's going to come from either an animal shelter or humane society or a private party home. And sometimes it might come from, you know, more than one humane society or more than one home. And a lot of times these dogs will develop um, behavior problems, bad behavior problems. Sometimes the behavior problems they learn on their own. Sometimes they pick up from other animals as well. But the good news is that we can use positive reinforcement to actually train out some of these bad behaviors. That's what we're going to show today. All right. Well, what's the first thing that you recommend we do when we bring the dog home? Actually, before you bring a dog home, you should be prepared. And that means going to a pet supply store and bringing items like we have on set here today. Have them in your home and ready to go. Ready to, so and ready to go. Which right. is the, the cage and the kennel. The, yeah, the crate. Kennel. We have a bed, some Hi. pet food bowls, a toy. He loves his toys. He loves and his toys. Yes. Yeah. And a leash, of course. <laughs> and yes. a leash. And the crate's, the crate's a big Hi, deal. All right, once we, now, uh, from your perspective, Joel, we, they come home and we just go, all right, here's your house. <laughs> go have fun. No, actually, crate training is a big, de a big deal, really, really important part of it. And that's kind of what I want to kind of show you right now, if we could. Okay. And this is a crate. And this is something I think most trainers will agree on that is really, really super important. Um, Why? And Why is it important? Why basically, we... we keep the dog from actually getting into places we don't want, it, want the dog to. There are times when we want to take a shower and want to mm -hmm. you know, be away. And we can keep put the dog in, away in here. Dog won't go to the bathroom in the house. Dog's not going to be because the dog's in the crate. Once the dog comes out of the crate, the idea is the dog comes, opens it, we open the door, the dog goes outside and goes to the bathroom oh. and gets conditioned <laughs> to actually going to the bathroom outside. And that's the, that's the idea behind so the, the crate. So a, a dog won't go uh, relieve right. themselves in their own sleeping? It, in, in, general, in general, most dogs will not go to the bathroom where they sleep. Exact, exactly. Okay. And so this is actually, this is a crate. And what we want to do is um, it's oh. always trained through positive reinforcement. Um, anybody um, that thinks for some reason this is a form of punishment or it's negative does not understand animal training because it really, really is done through positive reinforcement. And here's what I like to do. And if the one thing that the, uh, the viewers take away from this, the one thing I want them to watch is this. We're going to throw a food all the way in the back. First thing you do, let him get to that food. Okay. Watch what happens. He's going to turn around and he's going to come back out. Really, really super important. So many people, when that dog goes in, when they go, the, dog goes in the crate, the first thing people do is they shut the door and they yeah. play gotcha. Hmm. Because, Why is that bad? Well, what ends up happening is you ruin the trust. The dog, all of a sudden, if the dog does not want to be in there necessarily, and all of a sudden you put and you shut the door, the dog's like, oh my gosh, what happens? And if the dog had a previous issue with a crate, a negative issue with a crate, mm -hmm. guess what? You're never going to get the dog in there again. So what we do is we just, you know, and this is what it, for a couple days, folks. Just like that, he goes in, gets the food, and <laughs> comes back out couple days, and then what ends up happening maybe after two days, then the next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to actually have them go inside. We'll throw the food in there. We'll shut the door just for about maybe, I don't know, three or four seconds. Give them a treat. Always get the treat in there. Open the door. So it's a positive. You want this to be a positive experience. For exactly. You. And he actually comes back out. Boom. And you just yeah. simply increase the amount of time the dog is staying. And that's how, really what crate training is. How, how, a couple times a day for how long? What you want to do, basically, all my training sessions really are two to three minute sessions, four to five times a day. And that's what you want to start doing. And you just start taking it upon yourself. Really, honestly, after, I'd say, about maybe three to five days, um, the dog is staying in that crate for an hour, two hours and stuff. But you always want to make sure when that dog comes out of the crate that the dog always gets the opportunity to go outside um, and, condition, and condition that dog to, to going outside. Is that going to keep Fred off of my bed and damaging my sofa? He's a big dog. Nothing I mean, will keep Fred off your bed. Nothing, <laughs> nothing helps no, with that. No, but I, will, this, will this help? This uh, actually, no, yeah, abs absolutely. No, this is great. This is excellent. And, and, you know, dogs need a place to be. And dogs are, in general, den animals. They like being in enclosed areas. And so they might whine a little bit. But deep down inside, dogs like being in areas like this. And there are different types of crates, too. You can actually get a plastic one, which is even more enclosed mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. What, well, I know they feel safe in there because yeah. they're, you know, especially small ones, 
they like to get under the Fred will lay under the yeah. table because you don't want to get stepped on or tripped over. You know, he sounds asleep. Yeah, he's a big guy. Yeah, <laughs> a guy. I with doggies that are like with noises that right. get them used to noises. Get him used to noises yeah. or things that uh, yeah. like vacuum cleaners. Vacuum or? cleaners. Okay, here's the deal with a vacuum cleaner. I like to use what's called redirection. When we redirect the dog, we're actually redirecting the dog using positive reinforcement away from that sound. Is that bacon? Because <laughs> I want some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what we're going to do is redirect. So here's the deal, though. <clears throat> when we're dealing with uh, like vacuum cleaners, a lot of people think of the vacuum cleaners, it's the noise of the vacuum cleaner that scares a dog, but a lot of times it's what's called the trigger. In the animal world, in the animal behavior world, we call it trigger. A trigger is what happens prior to the vacuum cleaner coming on. So there's this sound here that this 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 always is gonna happen. It's already like foot exactly. up in the air. <laughs> so what we wanna do is guess what? We wanna hit this switch one time. What, what is he doing right now? He thinks that vacuum cleaner is going to come on because oh. he has heard vacuum cleaners come on before. Uh -huh. This is a seven, what, seven year old dog, eight year old, yeah. something yeah. like that. So he's been around. Okay, so what we're going to turn again. But you could see what I'm, all I'm doing is just making it, you know, really, really super positive with him, okay? So now once we're cool with that, now what we do is we plug it in and make sure we, hopefully it's not going to be on this time. Um, as we plug it in, okay, cool. So now when you turn it on, Really, really super important. It's quick, okay? The first thing we want to do, he's like, put food over here. He's like, no, he's like, Joel, I know you're going to turn this thing on, okay? It's like, I know you do. Okay, we want to get him away from it, just so we want to do just like really quick, boom, just like that, okay? And you can see he's not getting afraid or anything like that, but we're actually redirecting him away from there. Again, boom, just like that. And then, good boy, very, very so good. So now he knows. Just his, like that, yeah. When so that sound comes that's, on, yeah. he's. And that's, that's all we want to do, and you slowly start. And again, dog training is really about taking super, super small steps, small approximations, mm -hmm. okay? And, but here's the deal, when this is, once, once this is done, you still gonna have to move the vacuum cleaner as well, so. Yeah, that's why my dog Axel, who's this big, wants to eat it. Okay. <laughs> he want, he barks so loud, he wants to kill it. So what you wanna do. It's so what you, so, so what you wanna do with it is, if, is, is basically take the vacuum cleaner, is um, don't turn the vacuum cleaner on and just move the vacuum cleaner around okay, and get your dog comfortable with that and just reward your dog for that. Once your dog is okay with that, then you combine both things, the sound and the vacuum cleaner sure. movement. And that's really, I know it's like, you realize she's, I think it's like, suck like, up my dog like, and he wants to still think You realize sick. I can only make this personal if I can get my dog Fred to vacuum the house for me while I'm away. <laughs> exactly. It just helps me. We'll, we'll work on that. <laughs>